the first question is, what is Apache Tommy? Well, it's a web server on a profile like JBoss, Geronimo, Glassfish, the same. Uh, it contains uh, all Apache projects to, to build up uh, Tommy. Uh, Apache Tomcat, of course, is the primary focus of, of Tommy. OpenJPA, MyFace, and OpenWebMeetings, OpenJB, and then some extras, ActiveMQ, and Apache CXF. Um, these are the components required to meet the Java E6 web profile certification, which is what we're aiming for. So this would be sort of like the fourth viable open source solution for uh, Java EE development. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So what makes this one different than the other ones that are out there? Well, there's some key things is that uh, how many of you like Tomcat and use Tomcat? Yeah, exactly. And, and how many of you do not really care for app servers that are existing out there? Maybe use them when you only have to and you prefer Tomcat most of the time. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's some people who, who don't necessarily care, but there seems to be this market of people, this group of people that are Tomcat holdouts. Like, no matter what goes on in EE, they just don't want to move to Tomcat. And for good reason, Tomcat's real simple. It's been out there for more than a decade. It, you know, we, we know it, love it for simplicity. Um, the unfortunate thing when people include Tomcat in their EE servers is they just remove all of Tomcat's identity and strip it down and they're using it as a, just really like a library. And any of the things that you know how to do in Tomcat, you need to, need to learn how to do in this app, this other app server. So if you were developing something in Tomcat and you get to a certain point where you want a little extra, you have to either figure out how to integrate it in there yourself, or you have to move your application out of Tomcat and into something else, and then you have to re learn to redo all these basic things. So what we're doing to make Tommy is we're literally taking a Tomcat zip file from the website, unzipping it, adding libraries to it, zipping it back up, and then shipping it. And uh, we can make this happen because uh, we are not concerned about being the top guy uh, on the totem pole. We want to make Tomcat a web profile certified app server. So we integrate everything into Tommy in a really direct and minimalist fashion. So there's no fancy architectures. We're not trying to build a server that can be any kind of server. We just want to do the web profile with the least amount of overhead and in the simplest fashion possible. Uh, some of the faults of that are really simple. Uh, some of the faults of that, we leverage Tomcat for JMPI, we leverage Tomcat for security. Uh, we do any, anything that Tomcat would provide already, we use. And anything that's not there, that's where we add. So, Tom, Tommy is literally everything in Tomcat with only additions and nothing removed. Uh, it's pretty small. Right now, it's about 38. The zip. So that includes, of course, Tomcat and all the extras required to meet the web profile requirements. Um, runs with no extra memory requirements. So you boot the thing up with the default 64 meg and you got some play, play room before you would need to add it. And the only reason you would need to add it is if your app is of uh, medium to large size. Uh, you don't have to learn anything new to learn Tommy because. Literally, the entire directory structure and all the files are in it are Tomcat. Like I say, we, we unzip Tomcat. We don't delete files. We don't remove any jars. We just add stuff to it and zip it back up. And the Tomcat server XML is what you use, and so on. And another side benefit of all this is that since it's Tomcat focused and not messing with Tomcat's way of operating, any of the IDE tools that will work with Tomcat uh, will work with Tomcat. And, uh, Quite literally, we have two word, we have two versions of this. Um, one is the WAR file you can drop into an existing Tomcat. Go ahead, to the next slide. Uh, one is the WAR file you can zip, you can uh, drop into a, an already existing Tomcat install, and we support versions five five through seven. Um, and then, of course, the bundle which we call Tommy, which is just this 
WAR file plus Tomcat zipped together. Um, so if you don't like the version of Tomcat that we ship with Tommy, it doesn't matter. You can just take that WAR file. We ship. We also offer it up separately as a download and plot it into these uh, Tomcat versions, and then it will work. Um, in terms of web profile certification, we have to offer a all-in-one binary, uh, so which is what which is the primary motivation for having the convenient zip file. But yes, you can just take the WAR file and drop it into any of the uh, Tomcat versions that you may already be using or whatever. So it's pretty easy to, as I said, use the IDE tools that support Tomcat. And if you have an application that runs in Tomcat, it should continue to run fine with the extra stuff added. Um, this is quite old, actually, this, this integration. Um, it's been existing in the OpenEGP project for a long time. Um, well, the OpenEGP project is uh, an embedded EJP container, and it's always historically done things in a slightly sort of different way than most of the market. Uh, back in the early 2000s, when people were writing their app servers, all everybody was taking Tomcat, serving it down. Well, we thought, well, there's going to be a huge number of people that are going to be left over who don't like that. We're going to want to do things in different ways. So that's, the, that's the approach that we took. And since we had an embeddable EJP container, it was quite easy to just embed it in Tomcat, get the wiring going, and just fill in the gaps, basically. Um, that little integration is the origin of the EJPs and WAR feature that is in Java EP6. The concept of just taking the EJBs and putting them in the, the web app and saying, that's good enough, we don't need all this fancy packaging. Um, and that's really sort of an extension of our thoughts, our thought process in that time, which was, you know, putting open EJB to Tomcat, well, why don't we just put EJBs into WAR files? It's sort of like a lot of progression of that uh, mentality that we have. Um, go ahead and uh, switch to the next one. So we are in the process of certifying this. Uh, EE6 web profile. Um, the rules of the certification process don't allow you to say what percentage you are in that, in that, uh, in that process. Uh, you can say yes or no or certified, so we're in progress. Uh, but I can tell you, the, it's pretty impressive the setup we have, and I really wish I could show it to you. Uh, we're doing our work in Amazon EC2, and we're using Micronodes, the smallest uh, VM that EC2 offers. Uh, we take the TCK, which is quite large, we split it up into 750 chunks of tests, distribute it across an active MQ queue, fire that stuff out to 100 spot instances that do all the tests, all these little micro VMs, aggregate all the results back, and you get results in about 40 minutes to an hour or 20. So it's pretty impressive. We've been able to go quite fast uh, on our certification efforts. Normally, we take you know, like a year plus for someone to get certified because it's a lot of work. There's two benefits that we have. We're really close in relationship to, uh, you know, it's all Apache Stack and Apache Geronimo is there uh, supporting the communities that we leverage as well. Uh, I will also commit to Geronimo. Um, and so, you know, to have this sort of second, smaller version is sort of almost like a free, uh, benefit of having Geronimo there and all the other Apache projects. It's, it's, it's very different than Geronimo in the sense that Geronimo is a very complicated type of app server designed to be a generic server architecture for writing stuff. And it's got this GPN architecture and these car files and it goes way overboard in terms of, uh, you know, the complexity of its architecture. As a result, it takes a few hundred megabytes of firm gen space and a few hundred megabytes of heap space just to boot and uh, to run, where we run with default memory because we do no overhead. And any time someone goes, I got a crazy idea for a cool little architecture that might allow us to do this in the future, the answer is no. Unless you need it now, it doesn't matter. So the cool thing about all this is once we're done certifying, we'll be able to announce that we're certified in the cloud, kind of neat, and uh, it's an ideal platform of an ideal little small server that's web profile certified to use in the cloud because we're running it on micronodes with only the default memory. So the micronodes have six, 13 megabytes. So 64 minus 613, you get the rest for yourself. So 
that's pretty cool. As David, as David mentioned earlier in the uh, presentation, we use Tomcat's own security. We don't, we don't strip that out or replace it with our own security at all. Uh, we do add a, a, a few bits in there, but, but basically if you want to add security into your applications, um, you, you use exactly the same security mechanisms that, that you use now. So, for example, if we wanted to secure the movie fund application that, that we've seen, we could start by adding some users and roles to the Tomcat users XML file, and then we could start adding roles defined and roles allowed annotations to the stateless session being that I showed you. Um, if you then just add a bit of configuration to the web.xml to actually force the login prompt to come up, that's, that's all that needs to be done to, to secure your application. Uh, WS security uh, and web server security also works in the same way, so if you're using username and password based security, we'll use exactly the same, use exactly the same mechanism to authenticate the user. Uh, J JPA, uh, as I've mentioned, we, we support that. Uh, basically, all of the uh, assistance.xml files are found and deployed automatically, and all of the connection settings are filled in automatically from the data source that's configured in the openejb.xml file. There's no need to be using ejbins if you want to take advantage of this. You can just inject persistence units and context directly into servlets and managed bins. 